Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a BMS on your Vruzen.com battery kit. Now, if you didn't see my last video, I recommend you go back and check it out, because that's where I showed you how to assemble the Vruzen.com battery kit. But just to recap, the basic steps were that we snapped together our terminal caps, we created the top and bottom of our battery, we added in our 18650 cells, we pushed the two halves together, and then we added our bus bars to make our electrical connections. Now today, we're going to be adding our BMS. I'll be using this 10S 36 volt BMS that's also from Bruzen.com. The nice thing about this BMS is that it already comes with the wires pre-soldered. If you have another BMS, you might have to solder your charge and discharge wires onto the BMS's small pads, which can be a bit tricky just depending how good you are with a soldering iron. Now let's look at a wiring diagram to see how the BMS connects. There are three main thick wires on the BMS. The B- wire will connect to the negative terminal of our pack. The P-minus wire will be the negative discharge wire from the pack and will connect to whatever the load is. The C-minus wire will go to the charger. The small wires on the BMS are the balance wires and they'll connect to the positive end of each cell except for that first black wire that connects to the negative terminal of the first cell. If your BMS doesn't have one more wire than the number of cell groups though, then your balance wires will only connect to the positive terminal of each cell group. This BMS has 11 balance wires for 10 cells, so that's how we know that that first wire connects to the negative end of the first cell group. Lastly, we'll need to add our positive charge and discharge wires to the positive end of the last cell group. Alright, let's get started. I like to mount my BMS either with hot glue or capped on tape, and I usually put a piece of foam under it just to add a little bit of vibration dampening. Next, I'll start by connecting my B- wire to the negative terminal of the entire battery. That's the negative one terminal. I'll just strip the wires where I need to and then crimp them into the wire holders that came with the Vruzen battery building kit. You can use pliers for this, but it's better if you have a crimping tool. My crimping tool is like four bucks from Harbor Freight. You can also solder these instead of or in addition to crimping them if that's easier for you. Now I'll add my balance wires. I'll start with my minus one wire, which is the black wire. I like to wrap these around the threaded post, but I go under the bus bar. That way it doesn't get in the way of the flow of electricity in the series connection between cells. So I'll just tighten down the nut after I've wrapped the wire around the post, and I'll have my first balance wire connection. Now the next wire, which is actually the second wire, is the plus one balance wire. So it'll go on the positive side of the first cell group. And then I'll do the same thing with each successive wire until I reach the 11th balance wire, which connects to the positive end of the 10th cell group. I like to hold these wires down with capped on tape, but you can use hot glue to hold them in place as well. Now I need to add my positive charge and discharge wires. I'll use some 12 gauge silicone wire for the discharge wire, and I'll use 14 gauge silicone wire for the charge wire, since it doesn't need to carry as much current, so it doesn't need to be as thick of a wire. After I strip the wires, I'll crimp them into the wire holders. But remember, you can always solder these too if that just works better for you. I'll start with the discharge wire being crimped into both connections here, but I'll only include the charge wire in one connection, since again, it doesn't need to carry as much current, and it really only needs a single connection point on this size battery. Now it's a better idea to put your connectors on first, but I forgot, so I'll just add them on now, that's fine too. I'm using XT90 connectors for the discharge wires, and XT60 connectors for the charge wires. XT60 connectors would also be fine for the discharge wires, but this way I won't get them mixed up since they're different sizes. And so now I have a fully functional lithium battery with a BMS. At this point, I can either enclose it in some type of enclosure, or I can leave it the way it is. If you're building a battery that's just gonna sit in one place, like a do-it-yourself power wall or for home energy storage, many people just leave the battery like this. But for safety's sake, and especially if you're gonna be moving the battery around a lot, it's a good idea to enclose it in some type of enclosure. So in our next video, we're gonna talk about how to seal your battery in an enclosure using large diameter heat shrink. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this kit, you can check it out on vruzen.com where there's a lot more information and they have shipping available everywhere in the world. And if you found this video helpful and you wanna to continue to learn more about building batteries, I hope that you will consider checking out my book, Do-It-Yourself Lithium Batteries, which has everything you need to know about building lithium batteries, not just BMSs like we did today, but it covers the entire design and construction process. So I think you'll find this helpful, and you can find it on Amazon, both the uh, hard copy and the ebook. As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Take care, guys.